Hello, my friends, and welcome to my channel. This is Carmen with Elemental Design. And as you saw, give you guys a quick little sneak peek. I'm going to be doing an art journal page, um, and it's going to be featuring a moon, and it's also going to be featuring a girl. So I got inspiration from two things. Uh, the first thing is that on Friday, I went uh, to Sasson and Crafts live stream. And he did this beautiful layout um, of some giraffes, and there was a beautiful moon uh, that he featured on that page. And then Saturday, we went to the thrift store, um, and I found this beautiful little three-plate set. Uh, it's the one that I'm holding in my hand right now, and I thought to myself, you know, how cool would it be for me to draw this moon and incorporate that into an art journal page as well? And so I did. So what you guys see me doing here is kind of roughly sketching it out. I think I captured more or less the essence of what it's supposed to look like. I used um, this really huge circle. It's like a color wheel that I have. So I pretty much just flipped it over and just traced it and made a circle. And then from there, it was pretty easy to get the rest of the shape of the face for the moon. And yes, um, this, this art journal page um, has taken me about three or four days to do because um, I've been kind of going back and forth through it uh, between my live and also, you know, family and everything else. And so I had to speed it up. It's sped up like to the maximum um, because it was five and a half hours long on its own, like if I would have left it in real time. So I hope you guys don't mind the speed through, but um, I'm sure you guys would not have wanted to sit here for five and a half hours to watch it. Um, but yes. It's a very special page to me, and this is kind of why I took my time working with it. Because um, my birthday is on Monday, and uh, I'll be turning a year older. And a year older, hundreds of years wiser, <laughs> after all the experiences of life and everything else. Um, and this page more or less represents kind of who I am to a certain extent. Uh, it represents part of me. Not just because I'm the artist of the page, but um, more or less the symbology behind the page with the moon. Um, for those of you guys that know astrology and know like zodiacs and stuff like that, uh, Cancer, which is my sign, is ruled by the moon. Um, and it comes with all of its virtues and its afflictions. And so I'm very much, you know, true to its nature with a little bit of me and a little bit of mom, and a little bit of dad, and a little bit of everything else. Um, but this page really captures a lot of who I am. And uh, you'll get to understand a little bit more of what I mean as you see the finalization of what the page ends up turning out to be. At this point in time, um, I'm just kind of playing with it. And, you know, I'm using uh, Fabric Castell pit pens to kind of, you know, just go over all of my sketch lines and just make sure that I have everything kind of set in there so I don't lose none of the details. Um, and that's more or less what you see me doing here. It's just more or less just kind of going over all of my lines because I'm going to be just sewing uh, the page um, so that I don't lose none of the sketches that I have done. And so um, I have these little die cuts um, from another project that, you know, that I'm working on as well. And I have these little stars and I thought, you know what, <clears throat> let me use these little stars to kind of trace them out. Initially, I thought it was a good idea. But actually, I end up doing it in a much simpler way <laughs> um, as I start trying to figure out, you know, how to add smaller ones because I only had the one size. Um, and I pretty much what I did is I just did a regular, you know, um, crossed kind of star. You know how you cross it over all the lines. And then I just outlined it with the um, pit pen and then just erased all the little lines in the center. So I was like, ah, oh, super cool. I can have stars different size now. So that's kind of what I did. I know it's a little hard to see. Um, well, maybe once the bigger the videos in bigger format, you'll be able to see a little bit clearer. On my little screen, uh, with the editing, it doesn't really let me see all the little fine details. But hopefully, you guys will be able to see it. And if you don't, that's more or less what I did. So, moving right along. I love drawing faces. That's one of the things that I really, really like to do. Um, and you know, I try to incorporate faces in a lot of my art generally because, again, even though I'm not somebody that does a lot of writing, 
uh, in my journal, I like my art to speak and reflect what my thoughts are, what my feelings are. Um, you know, you can do art journaling in many different ways. And so this is just um, what I feel most comfortable with. <coughs> and so to color her in, I'm using a variety of different things. I'm going in pretty much on the watercolor uh, for the first half of this process. And I am using Fabric-Castell um, watercolor crayons. And I'm also using Jane Davenport's uh, watercolors as well to kind of put in some of the lighter tones and some of the darker tones. I'll be adding acrylic into this a little bit later on because acrylic is more permanent. And that way, you know, just in case of any accidents, I won't have anything moving, you know, moving around. So I'm going to kind of mix a couple different um, flesh tones. And I'm going to be kind of going back and forth between, you know, watercolor and acrylic throughout this page. So you're going to definitely see a lot of different uh, techniques as far as that. I really do like to mix the watercolor with the acrylic. It kind of gives me a base and it lets me kind of set the tone more or less for how the rest of the page is going to end up kind of looking. Um, plus it helps me to get some darker values in there. And then since they're reactive to the acrylic, you know, because it's wet. Um, it'll give me a variation, <clears throat> excuse me, it'll give me a variation with the tones. Um, so it's something that you can definitely practice and, you know, play around with. Uh, if you have like watercolors and stuff like that, and if you have some acrylics, um, they blend with each other so you could get some different tones and stuff like that. So that's more or less what I did. I went into the face first with a layer of watercolor using the crayons and using, you know, some of my other water soluble products. Um, and watercolors and then I went over it with acrylic and pretty much as you see there I have different colors um, I just kind of mix and match a couple different colors I'll try to put a list of the products down below but um, in all honesty I put most of them away I know that for the most part um, I used natural beige and then I think I added a little bit of um, it's called rustic and it's a, a chalky finish kind of paint which is I think it's a little brown I think that's the other co the other color that I use there and between those two colors and white um, I pretty much got myself a little variation of you know tones and stuff like that so that I can add some highlights and um, you know stuff like that so and the brush that I'm using I didn't even realize it but the brush that I'm actually painting all of this with is actually an eyeshadow brush <laughs> From the dollar store not the black one that I have in my hand now that's actually a watercolor um, a watercolor brush pen uh, that I got off of eBay but the other purple one with the handle the first one uh, it's actually an eyeshadow brush I was like once I cleaned it I'm looking at it I'm like oh my god this is not even like an acrylic brush but it did a really beautiful job for blending so yeah I'm gonna use it again <laughs> so you never know you really never know what you can create art with um, and so yes so kind of going into it uh, back and forth and here I am adding some colors into the eye and I'm going with a little bit of a purple and I'm kind of blending that out with just a little bit of acrylic, a, a little bit of wet acrylic just to kind of soften up the color um, and just playing around between the acrylics and the watercolors just to get the color just right the way I wanted it. I wanted her to have like this um, kind of mystic look to her uh, because of course she's got the moon behind her. Um, and I like the color purple when it comes to these kinds of situations. And I thought that the color purple was perfect for this because co the pur color purple has a lot of uh, symbology. It represents loyalty. It represents a lot of things. It represents bravery. Um, and it just represents a lot of things. And I thought that, you know, coming into play with this page kind of representing a lot of me, um, I thought that, that would be the perfect color to do her eyes with because the eyes are obviously the window to the soul, as they say. I'm not sure. I haven't tested it, <laughs> but that's what they say. Um, and so I just kind of, you know, chose that color for her eyes. And I'm just kind of playing around, uh, you know, with everything, with the colors and stuff, and just outlining and just adding little bits and pieces here and there so I get it just right. I will continue to touch up on a lot of these things, um, you know, a lot of the little elements here and there. So right now what I'm doing is I'm using my fabric castell crayon and I just hauled these. I absolutely love them. I did a video review, but I'm not sure if the video came out right, so I might have to do it again. But absolutely love these crayons. Um, very easy to apply color. 
you can apply a lot, you know, you don't have to use up a lot of the crayons to apply a lot of color everywhere. The pigment is absolutely fabulous. And like I said before, the only downfall to this product is the fact that it's designed for children. The set is only 15 pieces. I really wish Fabric Cut Style would make, you know, a set for adults because I think that they would knock it out of the box. Um, and the price is really, really affordable. Although I don't know how much they would charge for an adult set. But if they can at least make the kid version, which is nice and affordable, uh, a larger set, like say 24, super, super happy. But um, pretty much, I start by trying to avoid the stars. You know, I, I start trying to like avoid the stars. And I'm like, this is just becoming too tactically involved for me. <laughs> and I, so I just end up bypassing and I end up just painting over everything. And I'm just like, forget it. I'm just going to paint over everything. Um, so here again, I'm doing another layer of um, watercolor and now I'm going in with a little bit of a darker tone. Uh, as is customary with me and my art, um, I, my art tends to grow. And what I mean by that is that whenever I start up with a page, I never really have a true, true plan. Um, I kind of go based on how I feel. Um, and like I said, this was like a couple days in the making. So my feelings did change <laughs> back and forth. I mean, I am a cancer at the end of the day. So yes, my feelings fluctuated and I had an idea at the beginning and I'm like, ah. Uh, after it kind of dried up, I'm like, okay, I like the elements, but I'm not really liking the way that um, the colors was, you know, the design that I was kind of going for initially, because I was trying to do like this dream state, um, kind of, you know, a wishful kind of dream state. And I wanted to do like these really funky kind of clouds and pillars. Um, but then I kind of decided not to do that. So um, I left that part of it alone. Now I'm going into the, the move part of it. And kind of designing and, and not designing but uh, coloring uh, that in and trying to you know dilute the color and just get different variations of the tone uh, you know throughout that whole moon and I will work on the moon and the rest of the page you know like I said in bits and pieces so hopefully you'll watch the whole thing through, um, to the end uh, because it turns out to be something completely different than what it is now and I am super, super um, excited about how this thing actually ends up turning out. I I love it. I love it. And I think it captures me so, so well. Um, and just, you know, the kind of person that I am, you know, the overly feely, kind of um, all over the place with between thoughts and feelings and the emotional and mental struggle that we all kind of go through at times. And this kind of represents that. Um, the moon is smiling and happy <laughs> because at the end of the day, you know, she's up there and all she has to do is provide us with light and help with, you know, gravity, so on and so forth. I don't want to get too, uh, too scientific here, but um, she's happy-go-lucky. She's like, hey, you know, I'm up here amongst the stars. You know, you're down there. You're looking a little serious, girl. Lighten up. <laughs> and that's more or less what that whole situation is like. Um, and pretty much she's smiling because you know she has reasons to be happy and even though she's amidst a very dark sky with stars that are really really far away she still finds a reason to be full of joy and that's more or less you know how I feel so even though there are many things that are happening all at the same time you still have to find a reason to be happy you have to find that happy place you have to find that place that you know brings sanity and kind of makes you believe that everything is going to be all right somehow some way down the line and so here i am again stubbornly trying to avoid the stars oh, you know i learned the hard way sometimes and that is so so true of me i definitely learned the hard way um I'll do things the same way multiple, multiple times before I'm like, oh, wait a minute, this is an easier way to do this. And so now I'm starting to go back into it and, you know, again, filling in the rest of the background um, and just kind of getting different tones here and there and just, you know, adding layer upon layer upon layer of, of color. And here I'm, you know, kind of deciding like, no, I'm not going to go with this idea. I'm going to go with a different idea. Now, the gesso that I was using, which is the Finnevere, is the clear gesso. It did this funky little thing to the page, um, which actually worked out in my favor. I think it, it um, since it captures color in, in different ways, 
it ended up working in my favor, but it's something that if you're going to be doing watercolors, um, I do not really recommend that you use because it just um, it streaks the page. And as you can see, I have like bands of color. I mean, it's the sky. So like I said, it worked in my favor, but it's a good lesson that I learned um, while doing this page is if you're going to be doing watercolors and you need to prep your paper because let's say you don't have a watercolor paper, um, this is not the one to use. I would recommend that you use just regular white gesso or even a different kind of gesso. I haven't tested other brands, but um, this clear one by Finnebear, just it works for other things and it's great for other things, but when it comes to watercoloring, eh -eh. especially because of the way that I applied it, um, it didn't work out too well. And so I have some banding going on. But it worked out in my favor at the end. So lesson learned. Now I know the do's and the don'ts <laughs> of this product, which, you know, is not a loss. And now I'm using my Marco Refined um, color pencils. This is like an extremely, extremely affordable set that you can get off of eBay. I've done reviews on this product. I use this product quite a lot. I absolutely love it. It colors almost over almost any kind of surface that you have either painted um, and it grabs the pigment really really well and I just love it it's very smooth it's very creamy and it's very easy to lay out and it's very pigmented um, so for an affordable product I got the whole set of 72 which I think is a bigger set I'm not sure um, but I got the set of 72 which is like the max set and I didn't pay even pay 20 bucks for it like it's awesome 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 so if you find them they're called Marco Refine um, I know that they have a U.S. seller, but even if you have to get them from overseas, they're worth the wait and they're definitely worth the money. Um, they're awesome. So I'm just kind of using this like dark grays and I'm going in with blues and purples and just kind of playing around with some of the shading and adding some of the shading in there. And again, this whole page is going gonna, is gonna to change, you guys. This whole page is going to change. Now, one thing I will say is, is that um, after this clip, there was another part that I recorded, but I was having, I don't know what the heck I was having. I think I had like a brain fart or something because for some reason, when I went to go save that clip that I was recording, um, where I did the hair, um, I didn't save it. So what you're going to go into is the hair being really, really dark because I went in with, um, darker colors. Like I went in with uh, different, uh, acrylic colors. I, mixed um, deep blue and black and I made her hair like really really dark um, and I also added some of that to the background of the page as well and unfortunately I didn't capture that but you'll get to see more or less um, you know how she's looking uh, and we're kind of halfway through at this point in time of this video but overall I think the you know the video captured most of what I was doing so I'm okay with it Every now and then, you guys, I forget to hit record. That's not what happened with that clip, but it does happen to me sometimes, <clears throat> which is why sometimes you guys don't get um, as many videos of me doing these kinds of things because when I go turn around to hit stop, I'm like, shoot, I never hit record to start with. So, ugh, frustrating, I know. Multitasking all the time, and um, my brain is just all over the place. So, voila, magic. <laughs> This is why it is darker. I mixed the blue and the black and then I watered it down um, to get the color in the background. And pretty much I did her whole hair with the blue and the black. Um, and you kind of see me trying to share, you know, share with you guys a little bit of what I did with mixing the colors here. So um, I'm going to start working on the moon now and I'm going to start going into it with acrylics and um, trying to keep that same kind of shading because I really like that shading that I did on that with the watercolor. But now I'm going to try to do that with acrylic so that it's permanent and it doesn't bleed just in case of any little mishaps um, and yes so this is my attempt at blending uh, this whole situation out and I didn't realize how shiny that paint was um, I used different paints I just used the colors and I don't sometimes I don't look at if it's satin or if it's gloss sometimes I just go for the color and I don't necessarily pay attention to like the small details of what type of paint are you using um, and the moon came out kind of shiny, but I think overall it still looks, uh, you know, pretty good. So it ends up with a little bit of a glossy look, which is kind of fine because it picks up light and the moon is very reflective. So <laughs> I guess it still kind of goes, um, 
Plus, it'll help me to cover up some of those watermarks that were left over from like the, the watercolor kind of pooling in certain places that I didn't get to fast enough. Because, yes, I have an issue with excess. <laughs> and sometimes I just add too much water or I add too much color. Um, I just play around. Like, honestly, I, I, you know, I tell myself and I tell others all the time that I think half of the time is just luck that the products, you know, the, the end result, the end product ends up looking the way that it looks because half the time I have no idea what the heck I'm doing. And <laughs> I'm being honest with you guys. Half the time I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I get so intertwined or intermingled or entwined or however you say it with the process of actually just creating and just painting and doing all of, you know, adding all the layers that I forget the technicalities of certain things. Like when I forget to press record, <laughs> I get so like so excited about actually <clears throat> painting and drawing and this and that that I like I forget the small stuff so sometimes it's just sheer luck that the pieces end up you know the way that they end up but yes I absolutely loved this this page um, I think it came out absolutely awesome and I think it was the perfect way for me to kind of represent you know this new milestone in my life, turning a year older, and, um, you know, everything that came along with it, and so, yes, I think it'll be the perfect way, I'll always remember this, I think, hopefully I'll remember this <laughs> when I'm, like, 60 or 70, um, and I don't start, you know, forgetting, like, what my keys are, and, like, what my kids' names are, and stuff like that, because, you know, things happen, <laughs> so, um, for the most part, I'm doing a whole bunch of different colors here, and I mixed white, and I mixed purple, and I also have blue and black, and I'm just kind of going into it like that. Um, it has like a kind of a lavenderish kind of feel to her um, to kind of match, you know, the eyes in a way. So I kept it kind of like in that kind of color scheme. And on the plate that I used as a reference, there's like a shading on that part of, you know, the back side of the moon, I guess. So I tried to capture that as best as I could, um, but you know, I'm as an artist, I'm evolving every day. You know, I'm learning new things every day, new techniques. Um, and some things work out better than others. I still have a lot, a lot to learn, and I still have a lot of areas that I can grow when it comes to you know art and stuff like that. But I like, I like what I produce so far, and I hope that you guys like what I you know, been sharing with you guys, and although I'm not the perfect teacher because I don't know a lot of the technicalities, a lot of the terminology, and just, you know, this is this, and this is that, I don't know a lot of those things, you guys, so, you know, I can't teach you that, but hopefully what I can bring to the table is inspiration, and hopefully you do find yourself inspired um, by watching, you know, watching my videos and seeing the things that I kind of create. Oh. My husband was showing me something <laughs> on his phone. I'm just going to leave it in there. Oh, wow. He told me to get it out, but I'm just going to leave it in there. Um, I didn't really like the nose. And now that I look at it on the screen, it actually looked it pretty good. So, But I did it again. I did it over. And I guess I didn't share that part either. So that must have been another part of the clip that I didn't record. Like I said, sorry, you guys. Um, sometimes I miss certain things. But pretty much I just did the little letter C on the side. And then I did like a little half a moon on the inside. Um, and again, with the same dark, um, the black-blue uh, combo of paint, uh, it's more or less how I did, you know, all of the outlining and things like that for the moon to get her just, you know, kind of standing out the right way from the background. I need like a bell on this thing or something that tells me, hey, Carmen, guess what? You forgot to press play. My husband, Sasson and Crafts, who's also a crafter here, is always like, are you recording? Did you check? Like he's always checking on me because he hears me all the time saying, ah, I forgot to press record. <laughs> he hears me freaking out all the time when I forget to do it. Um, so he's always like, every time he passes by, he checks. He's like, did you press record? <laughs> are you recording? <laughs> he's always checking up on me on that. Um, but yes, yeah, just kind of outlining it now with a little bit of the acrylic mix um, of colors, and I'm just like in love with this with this page right now. I fall in love with almost everything that I create. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I guess it's a good thing, right? 
I guess it's a good thing. But um, I do. I fall in love with a lot of the things that I create. Um, I love working on these canvases that I've been doing throughout the summer. And I hope to be able to make more. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I hope to be able to make more. Uh, I still have a few left over. And if you haven't, uh, you know, popped into my lives yet, uh, I hope that you do. I'm live every Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, for this whole summer of 2018, just in case you're watching this video, you know, sometime next year, 2019 or something, um, I'm giving away canvases that I'm making uh, throughout this whole summer, you know, kind of like a thank you, uh, you know, just for all the love and all the support that you guys have shown me. Um, there's a lot of you that still follow me to this day that were here from the beginning, from, you know, from when I first, first started. And still show me so much love and so much support on my channel um, and off my channel as well. So I just want to say thank you so much for all of that. Um, you encourage me, you guys, and it means a lot to me. And so this whole giveaway that I'm doing is pretty much as a thank you for that, you know, for being there. And <clears throat> Jesus, my throat is dry. Sorry. <laughs> being there and just you know all the love and all the support that I get so whenever I'm able I like to be able to share with you guys some of the art that I create um, you know for myself but also for you and so as you guys can see now I'm filling in my stars now my original idea was to fill them in with some of the yellow which is how I started it but then it wasn't I didn't like it it didn't pop as much so I kind of started going into it with the white and just keeping them all white I think that that'll you know show a little bit better and I'm also gonna go over them with a Posca pen Posca marker in white as well to just try to get them a little bit more you know saturated a little bit more on the intense white look um, and then I'm gonna outline them with a black uh, fit pen and so if you haven't um, noticed yet I did when I did her hair, um, I did her hair with like these ripples and more or less, um, I wanted her to represent feeling, um, the outpour of feeling, um, the flow of feelings. And we know that the moon, at least it is said, I don't know if it's been proven or not, but it is said that the moon has a lot to do with, you know, feelings and the fluctuations of feelings. Um, and people are, can be very in tune. Um, you know, with their surroundings, so on and so forth, can be very, what is the word, empathetic or apathetic? I'm not really sure. Um, empathic? I think it's something like that. Um, but pretty much it means that you can sense others' feelings um, or you're very in tune to things like that. And that I definitely am. And so uh, this is supposed to represent like the outpour of not just my feelings, but of feelings in general, um, just allowing things to kind of flow. And I will turn her hair uh, into somewhat of a river. <laughs> yes, I, you heard me correctly. I, yes, I am going to turn her hair into a river. And in the background of this river, you're going to see that I'm going to attempt to create uh, what appears to be like mountains or some kind of landscape in the far distance. We don't know if she's coming out of the water or we don't know if she is what's creating the water. Um, and that's kind of the illusion, you know, that this art journal page kind of portrays. Now, I do apologize if I'm making you guys dizzy with turning the book kind of, you know, around and around and around. But the way that I sit at my desk is kind of awkward. Um, and so the, this art journal is like 14 inches long. It's really, really big. Um, it's like one of the really big ones that um, Canton has. It's a mixed media art journal. Let me see if I get the, the It's 11 by 14 inches. And it's a Canton Media art journal. And so it's a little large, so I have to kind of maneuver however I can. So now I'm putting highlights into her hair because obviously she's in front of the moon or she's next to it or whatever the case may be. But there's got to be some reflection coming off of her hair because of the light. And so I'm going to add, you know, this is supposed to be like the creation of this river. So I'm going to add all of these reflections into her hair and pretty much very simple. I'm just streaking it with the white and then just blending it out with my, my finger, kind of smudging them down. So I'm smudging them in the direction that I want them to go. So I'm just adding and smudging, adding and smudging. And I'm doing that all the way 
down. Hopefully I did a good job with the highlights in her hair. Um, sometimes I can go a little overboard. You know, like I said, nothing like excess. At least that's what my world is ruled on. Um, and this video is going to be coming to its end soon. We have about five or six minutes more to go before this art journal page is complete. And I'm just like, ah, in love, in love. So here's the water's kind of cascading. And again, I don't know if she's coming out of the water or she's creating the water. All I know is that it is flowing. It is flowing, it is flowing. So here we have this little kind of lagoonish kind of area that I try to create. Um, and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to name this art journal page, but I'm sure that I'll think of something. Um, and now I'm going to work on adding a little bit of the detail and actually turning those little lumps in the back into something that actually resembles some kind of mountain, um, some kind of far away, far away mountain. And I'm going to, you know, give it its little textured areas um, and give it its, a little bit of reflection here and there um, just to kind of make it look like, you know, it's some kind of mountain. <laughs> Um, and yes, I'm going to outline a little bit of the hair as well. And this page is just about done, you guys. Um, unfortunately, I don't get to do voiceovers that often. I wish that I could, but sometimes, you know, life doesn't allow me to have the time uh, to do the voiceovers. So I hope that you guys have been enjoying some of the videos that I've been putting up where I'm just playing music and stuff like that. Um, I do, and I will try to do better at doing voiceovers, even though I'm not really good at instruction, and even when it's something that I created, I still can't break it down properly, so I do apologize for that. Um, but I hope that you at least, you know, you enjoy the process, and you enjoy the, 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 the sound of my voice and the things that I'm saying, um, and hopefully you laugh a little. And um, if you don't like what I have to say, you could just, you know, mute it. Hopefully you don't have to do that, but you can also put music, you know, your own kind of music in the background and mute the video, and then you could just watch the video play. So, in the meanwhile, I'm adding a little bit of reflection with a little bit of the white, and then I'm also mixing a little bit of that white with some of that blue and that black that I created, and, uh, you know, to do like her hair and stuff like that, just to kind of bring them all kind of together. And... I really like how everything kind of separates. You know, we have the sky with this humongous moon, and then we have like these mountains in the background. I'm going to try to add some pictures so that you guys can see the stills of what it actually looks like um, now that it's all completed. And I actually forgot to outline one of the stars. I noticed like literally right before I started doing this. So if you guys say, hey, Carmen, you forgot a star. I got it. I just didn't get it on video. <laughs> <laughs> it's like how many more things can go wrong here but um yes but I really did enjoy I, I like I said I love I love how this page came out um, hopefully you guys will like it as well I don't do much mix me um, art generally live because art generally everything takes time for me I'm not really a really fast like really fast crafter some things I can I can do quickly other things do take me some time. Um, something like this that just has so much detail um, does take me quite a while. But if you guys like watching this kind of stuff and you would like for me to, you know, put some live videos of me doing art journaling, I don't mind doing that. I would love to do that um, and do some art journaling with you guys, you know, there. I also have an art journaling series that I did. Um, where I kind of share with you how you can go about art journaling. It covers a couple different elements. Um, it's like a nine-part video where I cover, you know, different categories of art journaling for different styles of art journaling. So if you want to check that out, it's called um, Art Journaling 1, 2, 3. And you can find that on my channel. I have a playlist there. So if you want to get into art journaling and you don't necessarily know how you want to go about it, um, I share with you a couple different ways that you can get into it and maybe one of them suits your needs. Um, and yes, so I'm finishing it up. I made the, you know, the inside a little bit dark. I try to add a little bit of highlight here and there, but I more or less blended that out as much as I can because it's the dark part of her hair. It's the part that's inside, you know, in the back, behind the neck. So I kept that kind of dark. Now I'm just going to add a few little 
details here and there and we are pretty much about done. So I think the last thing that I'm going to do here is just outline the stars. Again, I didn't do any sentiment or anything like that because I think that I'll, I would like for this, for whoever sees this, to um, identify with it in any way that they wish, in any way that it speaks to them. That would be perfectly fine. Um, it speaks to me one way, but somebody else might see it and say, hmm, you know, she sees it like this, but I see it like this. I would love to hear what you guys think. So definitely leave your comments in the description area down below. So I want to say thank you once again for watching this video, for being a part of my channel. If you haven't subscribed, I hope that you do. If you would like to, follow me on Instagram at Design Elemental. Definitely leave me your comments down below because I would love to hear what you guys think. I'm also open to suggestions. Um, let me know, you know, what's on your mind. Um, and yeah, you guys, thank you all so, so much for being a part of this journey. It's been amazing, uh, full of a little bit of everything, but overall, an awesome, awesome experience. And I hope to continue to bring you guys more. And I hope that you continue to enjoy and like the things that I bring, you know, to my channel. And I will catch you guys on the next one. And as always, you guys, be safe, stay blessed, and have an awesome, awesome, awesome week. And I will, got you, I will catch you guys on the next video. Have a good one. Bye.